Do you ever feel like you and your partner are on completely different pages, leaving you frustrated and unheard? Have you ever found yourself reacting impulsively to situations only to regret it later and wonder if it would have been better if you had a better handle on your emotions? And do you struggle with balancing your vulnerability and your strength, fearing that showing too much of yourself might be seen as a weakness? Relationships, especially romantic ones, can be challenging. Sometimes you feel like you or your partner are on two different planets. You might think, I love him, but we're just not connected. I don't even know if it's worth it. This feeling can be overwhelming, but I want you to know that you're not alone. And there is a way through it. Hello, sophisticates. Welcome back to Brains and Bobbles with Davina Dandridge, author and emotional empowerment coach. If you're new here, I'm thrilled to have you. Today, we're exploring an important topic that affects so many women, and it's dealing with difficult relationships. In this video, I share some unique tips with you on how to transform chaotic emotional responses to sophisticated empowerment and start improving your relationships today. One of the biggest issues many women face is feeling unheard or unseen by their partners. It can make you feel undervalued and frustrated. You might wonder, how do I get him to really see me, hear me? It's a tough question, but the answer lies in mastering your emotional intelligence and effective communication. Understanding emotional intelligence can bridge the gap, allowing you to communicate more effectively and feel valued in your relationship. Let's talk about vulnerability and submission. Many women have grown up with the idea that showing vulnerability is a sign of weakness. They think they have to be strong all the time. But there's a profound difference between vulnerability and submission. Vulnerability is about being open and honest, letting your partner see you for your true self, including your fears and including your insecurities. Submission, on the other hand, is often misunderstood as losing yourself or giving up your control. But the true emotional strength comes from vulnerability. It's about showing your partner that you trust him with your feelings. It doesn't mean changing who you are. It means embracing who you are fully with your insecurities. In Proverbs 31, 25, it says, strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. They're talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, and she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. She knows who she is. So she is free to be vulnerable to her husband. She is not worried if he'll use her vulnerability to manipulate her sometime down the line, sometime in the future, he's going to throw it back up in her face. She is a self-confident emotional planner. She's designing her future. So how do you balance vulnerability without losing yourself in the relationship? It's about boundaries. It's about communicating your needs clearly. No one can read your mind. You don't have to do other things to get his attention, like withhold sex as a way to get respect or manipulate your partner. Instead, focus on building mutual respect through understanding and emotional planning. Respecting the relationship doesn't come from acting mean or nagging. It comes from showing your partner that you value yourself and you value your emotions. If you're finding this information helpful, be sure to check out my video on how to use emotional intelligence to be valuable in relationships. I put the link below. By becoming an emotional planner, you can gain control over your responses, transforming potential conflicts into opportunities for growth. Your growth is so important. Your growth is the source needed to fuel the future for your desires. Difficult relationships, they can damage your emotions and they can get you to the point where you become stuck if you don't decide to do something about yourself and the triggers that you've had. Through emotional intelligence, you'll develop the tools needed to motivate yourself to pursue 
personal growth, because that's all that it is. If you haven't already started managing your emotions or thinking about your actions and what causes those actions, then you just need to do some growth activities. There are changes you'll need to make to your mindset that will enable you to become like the Proverbs 31 woman, a woman with sophisticated empowerment. Here's one of my quotes, and it exemplifies the importance of being vulnerable even in difficult relationships. All right, so here it is. Your words can say love. Your listening proves it. So you have to put proof. You have to put action behind the words that you say to show that you really are invested in your relationship. I was once asked in a Q&A, well, what is vulnerability? Well, I'll tell you what vulnerability is. Vulnerability in relationships is when you really want to say something. You really want to get your point across or prove that you're right, but instead you table your comment until later and you let your partner say what he needs to say. And this is important because you're letting your partner be heard. You're showing him how to treat you. And this sacrifice, you know, of being quiet, is for the good of the relationship. Listening also enables you to get clarity on the situation because when you're always talking and always trying to protect your weight in the relationship, you don't see the full picture. You need to take action to start identifying where there are opportunities for growth in your life. If you're enjoying this content and you want to dive deeper into emotional empowerment, join my Emotional Reset Challenge. This challenge is a transformative experience designed to help you manage your emotions and curate the life that you desire. Click the link in the description below and sign up today. All right. So let's address a misconception that a lot of women have. And here's what they'll say to themselves. Why do I have to change if the way I act has worked in the past? Well, the truth is, you don't have to change. But if you want to start having peace in your relationship, you will open your mind to something different. Because if you continue with the actions that you've used in the past, then you'll keep getting the results that you've gotten in the past. Growth requires change. In order to grow, you have to make these changes. Holding on to old patterns might have served you before, but they could be what's holding you back right now. What's holding you back from having the successful relationship that you want. By managing your emotions and being flexible in your thinking, you can foster healthier, more fulfilling relationships. Another important point is balancing caring for your mate's feelings without losing your voice. And I know this can be difficult, but it's essential to communicate your needs and your boundaries clearly. Remember, staying strong doesn't mean being stiff and rigid. It's about being adaptable and being empathetic while maintaining your self-respect. And for people pleasers, which I'm a recovering people pleaser, this can be a delicate dance. <laughs> Embracing sophisticated empowerment means recognizing that true strength lies in your ability to be both vulnerable and resilient. You have to do both. So here are the practical tips to transform your relationship with a unique spin that will inspire real change in you. And it's simple. The first one is to turn triggers into triumphs. Recognize your emotional triggers and use them. Use them as a catalyst for personal growth. Imagine each trigger as an opportunity to rewrite your response and turn potential conflicts into moments of connection. So instead of reacting in a way that will pull you further apart, you react in a way that's going to bring you closer together. Changing the power of your triggers helps to manage your emotions as well. Your emotions, they impact your thinking, and your thinking impacts your behavior, and your behavior impacts your environment, and in this case, your relationship. Number two, use self-awareness as a superpower. Embrace self-awareness as your personal, powerful, unique gift. You have to regularly check in with your emotions like you would a close friend. And then you would write down your feelings 
Do this every day. And this will help you understand the patterns that you have in your emotion, the things that set you off. And that way you can proactively address them. This transform you from a trigger responder to an emotional planner. Number three, create a vision board for positive goals, not just the material things that you want, but for positivity in relationships and include relationship specific goals. You visualize a healthy, loving relationship. What does that look like? Does that look like spending more time together? Does that look like going on dates? Does that look like having a trip? Does that look like just watching television together or having dinner together? What does it look like? Put a picture of it, get it, put it together and use this daily as a reminder to strive toward that vision. I mean, you have to see it in order to go after it. Number four, develop gratitude routines. So what you're going to do is incorporate gratitude activities in your daily routine. So after doing skincare, after working out, you are going to start with writing down three things that you're grateful for about your relationship. This activity can shift your focus from the challenges that you're facing to the blessings that you've experienced by this union or the blessings that you're going to have in the future. But you can look back and be grateful and know this relationship might be rocky right now, but it's not that bad. And those blessings that I've experienced in the past, I'll, I'm grateful for them and I want more of them. This doesn't have to be a big deal either. This can be very easy to do. All you have to do is get just a regular notebook and write down what you're grateful for every morning. Because acknowledging this early in the day gets your focus on the positives of your relationships so that you can think positively about your relationship all the day long. Number five, I call this the PPP, not that PPP. This PPP is the positive phone prompt. So what you're going to do is save a digital prompt on your phone that reminds you to stay positive. And not just generally, but very specific. You're going to get an image that shows you and your partner smiling or doing something that you love to do or something that was a happy time in your life or a scripture that relates to relationships and being positive and you're going to save that in your notes or you could even pick a song and add that to your playlist, something that has sentimental value. Whenever you feel negativity creeping in, you're going to access this PPP and remind yourself of the commitment to positivity your commitment to your relationship. And finally, number six, the self-talk switch. You're going to practice switching negative self-talk with the scriptures or if you use positive affirmations to change your mindset right then and there. You're going to create a list of scriptures or affirmations that resonate with you and recite them whenever you feel negativity arising. Like whenever I feel doubt or I feel fear, I have my go-to scriptures. The Lord did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and soundness of mind. And I say that two times, three times, five times, however long until my thinking changes. You can do the same thing for specific scriptures about your relationship. Wherever you have an issue, there's a scripture for it. But what this does is it builds your faith. It builds your emotional resilience and it develops a self-image for yourself. So what I'm going to tell you is you can use any of these tips and your relationship will improve. If you use all of them, oh my goodness, you are going to see yourself in a positive, great relationship with the partner that you desire. If you're ready to take control of your emotions and transform your relationships, get my book, Brains and Bobbles Do What Works For You. Read how vulnerability is the key to having the type of relationship you want. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to st stay updated with more empowering content. Let's continue this journey of sophisticated empowerment together. I have a couple of questions for you, though. And I want you to comment below the answers to this question. Let's just get this dialogue going so we can really deep dive into what may be hindering you from having the relationship that you want and what could empower you 
to really deal with difficult relationships. So the first one is, have you seen a successful relationship? Not what's on television, not what your friends have, maybe not even what your parents have. Have you seen a successful relationship? If so, tell me what that looked like. If not, tell me what type of relationships you did see. And then, you know, a lot of times the argument and the battle in relationships is about people taking things personally. They aren't readily able to hear what the other person says, especially if it goes against what you think is right. So what causes you to take things personally? Is there something that triggers you to not just accept that you might just have a difference of opinion? I don't know. Tell me about it. And then finally, how do you know when you're in love? Sometimes the struggle is just because this isn't the relationship for you. How do you know that this is the relationship, and I'm, not, I'm talking outside of marriage, how do you know that this is the relationship that you really need to work on? It could be that you are dealing with someone who you're not equally yoked with, who you wouldn't have a good relationship with anyway. Please share your experiences in the comments. Thank you for watching. And remember, you have the power to create the life you desire. See you next time.